Hey friends, and welcome back for another guitar tip. Today's tip is a great way for guitarists playing in any style really to open your mind up to new possibilities on the instrument. Today is all about using alternate tunings on the guitar. Regardless of what type of guitar you play, classical, electric, gypsy jazz, flamenco, you know, you name it, you probably use what's called standard tuning. Standard tuning on a guitar is E, A, D, G, B, E. For hundreds of years, whether you're playing music by the Beatles, uh, Metallica, all the way back to the 19th century with Fernando Sor, you're probably using this standard tuning. And it's probably standard for a reason, right? You know, we didn't end up here by accident. We ended up here through a lot of trial and error. And there were certainly many different tuning systems which existed uh, before this standard tuning system. This instrument here is what the guitar looked like in the 17th century. Uh, this is the Baroque guitar. And basically this evolved directly into the guitar that we all know and love today. Here we have an interesting tuning. We don't have the low E string, but we do have A, D, G, B, E. But even those strings are not normal. You know, we have, first of all, double strings um, for most of them. And then we have on the D string, a high D and a low D, which play at the same time. Then for the A, the fifth string, which should be with the lowest note so far, actually, it goes up the octave. So this is a re-entrant tuning. So the guitar that we all know today, the E, A, D, G, B, E tuning, definitely wasn't always the standard tuning, um, but let's get back to the modern guitar. This standard tuning evolved because it really works. It really works for composing music, it really works for playing chords. It's a good one, but I often feel as a player, as an improviser, as an occasional composer, I feel that if we only play in standard tuning, we find ourselves limited in certain ways, meaning that inherent to the tuning there are certain chord shapes and voicings which are going to work better than others. And with hundreds of years of music behind this tuning, obviously this one is good, but it doesn't mean we can't alter a string or two to open up some new possibilities. In today's guitar tip, I'm going to show you how to use alternate tunings on the guitar to perhaps inspire you to play the instrument in a new way. The first alternate tuning that guitarists learn is drop D. This is where we take the low E string and we just simply drop it down. How far? A whole step down until it matches the fourth string, D. Of course, this is one octave apart. You can really tune this well if you play the harmonic on the sixth string and then the open D. If it's a little off, you'll hear beats. Wow, 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 wow. And you wanna get those beats to go away like that. That will, be, that will mean you're in tune. This is called drop D. And in drop D, one of the reasons it sounds so good is because we have D, A, D as our low three strings on the basses. And actually, I came to know this tuning really well because we used this tuning in my metal band. This idea of playing an open power chord is what it is on the low bass strings. So you can really play great metal music on this tuning. Yeah. <laughs> So if you're playing punk, metal, or, or rock, uh, if you just lay your fingers down over the basses in a bar chord, you can just slide them around. And, and everything you do, you'll find out there are certain frets which sound good. So the good frets to play, for example, a minor scale would be zero, two, three, five, seven, eight. And you could just invent some nice music on those. So, easy to play something really heavy, you know? If you want to play something in a lighter style with some, perhaps some finger picking, this is also a great tuning because it means that if you play, for example, with your thumb on the low basses here, the bottom three strings, you can just pluck any of those strings anytime you want and they make a nice open D chord. Uh, and this allows your other fingers to play a melody on top. So for example, if we play a D minor scale on the first two strings, we'll play D, the third fret of the second string, open E, F, the first fret, G, the third fret. If we just keep to those frets there, we can improvise utilizing this open D tuning. Yeah, 
If we go up a little higher and we play the fifth fret and sixth fret on the first string, it can get even more beautiful. So really all I'm doing here is I'm randomly plucking these bass strings with my thumb and just playing notes that work in that scale. You can make it major by using frets 0, 2, 3, 5, 7 instead, and still this first D. The next alternate tuning I want to suggest is what I call drop G. So in this case, we play the fifth string A, and we're gonna make it sound just like the G string, but an octave lower. So same idea as drop D. And now we have D, G, D, G. This tuning is fantastic for playing in G major or G minor. Uh, in G major especially, because now the bottom five strings are a G major chord. D, G, D, G, B natural. It's a G major chord. Now that leaves the first string open. So on the first string, if we use frets 0, 2, 3, 5, 7, 8, 10, 12, any of those frets in any order uh, with these open strings, we're going to get some beautiful sounds. The next tuning, let's bring our fifth string back to A. Um, now we have D, A, D again. So now we're back to drop D tuning. From here, I'd like to change the third string down to F sharp. It's a half step below. We can play the F sharp on the first string, second fret, and make that match. Uh, if you want the same exact note, you can play the fourth fret on the fourth string to make sure it matches. Now when you do this, now we have a D, A, D, F sharp chord. That's a D major chord. There's a lot you could do there, but let's go really extreme with this one. Let's take our second string down to A, and our first string down to G. This means our entire guitar is one big D major chord, because we have D, A, D, F sharp, A, D. So you have three Ds and two As. So it's a really thick sounding chord. You could also make this one minor if you just take the third string down to F sharp. We'll stay in major. Though. There's no way you can sound bad in this tuning. Everything sounds fantastic. You can finger pick, you can strum. When you finger pick, you can just hop your thumb around. A bit of percussion. Just by slapping that sixth string, you could dabble with some harmonics at the 12th fret, the 7th fret, or the 5th fret, which all sound amazing now because they're all beautiful chords. And of course you can play bigger chords too if you bar the 5th fret, bar the 7th fret. Those are our 1 chord, 4 chord, 5 chord. And if we can bar those chords, we can actually free up our other fingers to do more music.
So those are just a few examples, but I assure you the rabbit hole goes much deeper than that. <laughs> Start experimenting. What happens if you just change a string a half step off? How does that change the way you play? How does that change the way you think about the fretboard? You don't even need to know what notes you're playing. Just see what type of new resonances emerge from your instrument. So have fun experimenting with these fun alternate tunings. By the way, if you enjoyed this free video, you can give back to me by subscribing or liking this video. And if you really would like to help my channel, you could head to my Patreon, where you'll find many extra guitar tips only available there, as well as lots of other behind the scenes features and other perks. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.